But let's get to the disrespect, as you said. Let's get to it. Because on the, which podcast is this? Point Forward Podcast. Uh, Mikhail Bridges, one of my one of my guys. I like Mikhail Bridges. He was on the Point Forward Podcast with uh, Andre Iguodala and uh, Evan Turner. And he was asked, who's the best player in New York? Who's the best player in New York? Ooh. And let's listen to this conversation and react to it, courtesy of the Point Forward Podcast. Let's go. Here we go. Best player in New York. Jalen Brownson or Julius Randle, dead ass. <laughs> Talk to this man. All right, rock, bro. No, no disrespect to you, but I, no, who the best player in New York? You know I'm gonna say myself, bro. No, no, rock out. I'm, 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 I'm talking about. I got you too, bro. I got <laughs> no, you too. Think about this, bro. Right, when you talk pound about pound, he's the best player. Pound for pound, yeah. when you talk about you know, you know the way he plays the game, the fluidity of his game, uh, the many things he could do in the court, he can. Guard and play five positions. Julius Randle is doing that. I'm not taking nothing away from this game. Jalen Brunson is like that. Right Jalen Brunson is, he's a, a top tier IQ basketball player in the NBA. In the who, league. Who's in, getting 40. In the league. 17 and 20. In the like league for full of low IQ players. You're absolutely right. Which is sad that I say it like that because it sounds like I'm taking it away from Jalen. But yeah. I'm not. All right. <laughs> So that, that yeah, was, sounds like I'm taking it away from Jalen, but I'm not. But it sounds like you are, bro. Yeah, it sounds like you are. <laughs> I mean, look, nothing. I've, I've look. Iguodala is accomplished. He's a champion. He's he's accomplished a great deal in this league, right? Not to tell him how to evaluate players. I mean, this is the same guy who was hyping up Duncan Robinson over Steph Curry and Klay Thompson not too long ago in the bubble. But the but the thing is. It's say what you will about most of the NBA being low IQ players. Having a high IQ to go with your skill set is what makes great players great players. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. CP, isn't isn't that what LeBron gets complimented right. on? Like, uh, isn't that what Kobe got complimented on? Isn't that what Jordan got complimented on? Am I, am I missing something? What am I missing? Please, I would I would love to talk to Andre Iguodala. J. Cal, that's J. Cal's guy. I would love to talk to Andre Iguodala. What am I missing here? Isn't having a high IQ, isn't being a smart basketball player what you want? There's a lot of talented players in the NBA, but having it together up here, in my opinion, is what separates the goods from the greats and from great to, to God mode. Right? Do you talking about LeBron, Steph, Jokic? I'm talking about God mode. It's when you have it all together up here, when when the pressure's on the line in the fourth quarter, and these guys are still cerebral and killing you as if it was the first, and then turning it up a notch. You can't speed them up. You can't turn them over. You can't force them into a bad mistake. Locked in. Isn't that what you want? Uh, that's what I thought. But apparently, uh, that that gets you overrated. Even though he's not really saying that, it's kind of what he's alluding to. Yeah. Uh, it, it, when when you hear what Iggy's saying, it's like, well, he's just really smart in a league that's not really smart. So it's right. like, why should why should that be praised? It's like, wait a minute, shouldn't we be praising that? When you go to school, don't you praise the kid that's being smart? Like, right? Did, did, did I miss something? Uh, it just it just sounds ridiculous to me, man. The fact that he would go that route, but. All I all I can say is this is that Mikhail Bridges is good, but there's only one out of those two guys this past season in New York. Only one of them was playing in the playoffs between Brunson and Bridges. There you go. And one dropped 41 points against the Miami Heat. Yeah. I guess someone's like that. <laughs> right. Well, listen, listen, it's it's nothing against Bridges. Um, it's nothing against Bridges at all. I thought he had a phenomenal season. He was phenomenal. I'm looking forward to well. Unfortunately, he plays for the Nets. But I'm looking forward to Mikal Bridges, uh, personally, as a basketball player, elevate, continuing to elevate his game to see where it goes because we saw something completely different once he left Phoenix to get to the Nets. His shot creation just took a whole nother, took on a whole nother level. And I'm looking forward to seeing that. But it, it, there's no question. The best player, basketball player in New York is hands down Jalen Brunson. I mean... Here's the other thing that really bothers me from that take from Andre Iguodala. It's like, did he watch last year's playoffs when right. Luka was out? And he, right. and and you saw 
watch the Mavs against the Utah Jazz and you see Jalen Brunson go out there and ball out. Did, did, did we not just watch how the Mavs took a step back without Jalen Brunson to start this season? Yeah. Didn't they close down Luka and Kyrie to tank and just get a draft pick instead of making it through the play-in or even getting a spot in the playoffs? I guess that's how important that guy is because guess what Phoenix was able to do? Granted, you trade for Kevin Durant. Granted, you trade for Kevin Durant. But still, he goes over to Brooklyn. Brooklyn was already in a good place when Bridges got there. All right? He yeah. was already shuffled up. Six seed, what happens? Come on, man. Yeah. Offensively, I take Randall over Bridges. Yeah. I take that. Randall over Bridges. I, I yeah, still I need to see a larger sample size from Bridges. Offensively, defensively, he, he's, he's the piece better than both. But all well, around, to get, I'm giving it to Brunson. All around, <clears throat> for sure. I mean, yes, I even give it go to Randall over uh, Bridges because once again, who helped carry the New York Knicks into the playoffs for second season here? Yeah. Can, can, can Bridges, Bridges do that? Can Bridges do that? Can, can he go carry a team? There Let's go. go see that before you start knighting a guy who drops 44 points uh, in a Brooklyn Nets jersey and is just happy to be there in the playoffs. Can, yep. can we can we watch him do something before just, you know, for even half, not even half a season in Brooklyn? All right. Come yeah. on now. Like, look at, look at the, look at the, look, look at the, look at the resume. Facts. Let's just go. That that it's just that simple, man. I'm gonna make it quick. Yes, I do think it's important not to dismiss what Andre Iguodala said about Mikel Bridges or whatever his name is. Yes, because you got to consider the fact that first things first, this is a four-time champion under Steve Kerr, and I think this is actually a perfect time to have this conversation mm -hmm. because before going to the Golden State Warriors with the Sixers and the Nuggets, he was an ISO, get your buckets kind of player. Sure. As a player with Steve Kerr, who Kobe Bryant himself considered the greatest basketball ever played, the golden democracy, where everybody eats. Mm -hmm. I can see why he may look at somebody like Mikael Bridges and consider him a smarter basketball player than Jalen Brunson. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what I'm going to say, though. In, with the Mavericks, we saw Jalen Brunson do the 30 points, the 40 points in the playoffs in that system when Luka was out, because that's kind of how the system was designed. Mm -hmm. In New York, this season, he dribbled the ball and held the ball more than anybody in the entire league, right? So I don't know if that's Jalen Brunson's style of play specifically or those are just the situations he's in because of the coaches he plays for and the systems that he plays for. But it's going to be very interesting to see with the Olympics playing for Steve Kerr. I know he's the starter, but I will be very interested to see if Steve Kerr runs uh, basketball plays with the players in mind, as far as like the skills of the players, their mm -hmm. best skill sets, mm -hmm. running plays that way, or he runs his style of basketball. And it'd be interesting to see how Jalen Brunson fits in that style of basketball. Because we're yet to see, if, if I were to pick IQ, mm -hmm. I would pick Mikael Bridges' IQ over Jalen Brunson's based on what I've seen from Jalen Brunson so far. Just IQ. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it's I don't think we should dismiss like the idea that yes, Jalen Brunson is an absolute dog. Mm -hmm. He gets his buckets. But from the from the point of view of somebody who played the same exact style of basketball that Jalen Brunson plays, mm -hmm. ISO dominant, and has gone to win four championships in the smartest, highest IQ basketball ever played, mm -hmm. I can kind of see where he's coming from. Okay. I think that's fair. Look, I I I started before we even got to the clip, I said, look, you got to respect Iguodala's resume, right? It's his yeah. opinion. It's his opinion. But I just feel like from an offensive standpoint, I think Brunson's IQ is up there with the best of them. Yes, he had the ball in his hands, but you still got to make solid decisions with it. And he did. Uh -huh. and, and I respect that 100%. Right? Yeah. I do respect that. I don't know how productive... Again, I'm going to blame Tibbs' system mm -hmm. because it worked because Jalen Brunson was getting buckets and we were, we were winning games. Mm -hmm. I do want to remind us, though, we were losing games before the trade deadline when we got Josh Hart and then we won eight straight. And if mm -hmm. you look at the statistics, that addition of J uh, Josh Hart mm -hmm. literally changed the dynamics of our offense. Mm -hmm. It literally changed. It, everything became ball movement first when he was on the court. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's important to note that we were losing games, a lot of games before that trade. Mm -hmm. When that trade happened, the ball movement started a lot better and we got better results down the line. 
right? And I do, again, I love Jalen Brunson. I don't know if it's the smartest basketball though. For him, it's great. Mm -hmm. And then here's another thing to consider. Jalen Brunson is $25 million right now. It's, 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 it's great. We can build a roster. We can build with depth. In two years, we're going to pay Jalen Brunson about $45 million. Mm -hmm. Jalen Brunson at $45 million playing ISO-dominant basketball is different from Jalen Brunson at $25 million playing on a roster that can be built out with depth. Because now we're saying we are depending on this ISO-heavy six-foot mm -hmm. guard to basically be the center of the team. Is well, that well, winning basketball? No, no, no. That, that, see, that's, that's where you can't have that. You can't have it. I appreciate the call. I, I like your points. But that's not where the Knicks want to go here. You, you don't want to build a team around Jalen Brunson. You don't want to do that. He needs help. He needs help. Or is she going to have him in ice packs like Patrick Ewan? You don't want to put the team on his back on a max contract and have to have him deliver because they're going to turn on him just like they turn on everybody else. This is sweet now. It's a nice honeymoon phase. But the point is, is to get better players with him. You don't want to build around him. You want to build with him as one of your best players, right? Like Miami's got Jimmy. They got Bam. They're going to go get Dame. You know what I'm saying? You need that sort of uh, uh, situation here. You need that sort of situation. And then at the same time, yes, things change when you got Josh Hart here because you also had a good decision maker here, a guy that can play selfless, can facilitate the ball, gets rebounds, does all the intangibles that you need, and that overall is going to lift the team. I think that's what the impact that DiVincenzo is going to have. Overall, you need guys like that, and you also need good shooting. That will also help.